Right. Good morning, everybody. Very warm welcome from a rather rainy Johannesburg today. Um, this is our sixth Women in Sectional Title WIST seminar. And the very, very good news is that we are gaining traction. We're receiving emails from around the country on a daily basis to provide us with quite a lot of encouragement and, um, and, and support for this platform. So I really am very, very happy with the way it's going. And a lot of people have said to me, well, why are women in sectional title? What is your vision? What are you aiming at? What are you, what are you looking at, at achieving? And I suppose that it's really a work in progress. I think that all of you have a contribution to make. Uh, for me personally, it's about sharing experiences, sharing advice, sharing tips, uh, gaining information, providing information, uh, supporting each other, supporting each other, and maybe also hopefully looking at bursaries, mentorships, um, and even uh, some sort of um, take a woman to work kind of thing in, in sectional title. I think there's so much that we can, can look at. We can look at networking events. We've got interesting articles uh, on, on our site and certainly interesting interviews that are coming up as well with the University of Pretoria, who's got a, a degree uh, at, at the moment, which we need to explore and we need to, to send out to people. So I think that we're adding excitement we're telling women that you're not alone in this industry. And for me, that's really, really the most important thing about it. Our, our sponsor who has supported us from the beginning is uh, Zed Diefen, and that was Michael Schaefer. Thank you so much to Zed Diefen, which is a specialist finance company providing smart solutions to sectional title schemes um, with a wealth of practical experience in property and financial management and an understanding of all the challenges that they face. Um, the range of targeted products from ZDFIN uh, can be tailored to meet the specific needs of all the schemes. And we've also had a, a great interview with Michael Schaefer, which is on our video page. If you go to www.womeninsectionaltitle.co.uk, uh, ZA. So that's, that's exciting. And we're going to have a lot more of those kind of interactions. So today is about um, me, body corporate meetings in unprecedented times. And what unprecedented times? I mean, we've all faced the dramas of owners and trustees uh, trying to navigate through these rather stormy waters. And the people best positioned to tell us more about this would be our two ladies on our steering committee in the form of Serena De Freitas and Annette Lang. They're going to be interviewing our three panelists and introducing the panelists to you today. And I'm really excited to hear what they've got to say. I think we've all got a lot to learn. Uh, so really it's, uh, it's over to you, Serena. Thank you so much. And hello from uh, sunny Durban. I thought we were going to be saying how cold and and rainy it was because it was like that when we woke up. But hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. So as a managing agent, um, we've probably had to do about, I don't know how many uh, online meetings since May last year. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that don't like change. So I took a lot of convincing to go this route as well. Um, and I think that if you want to do something, you'll find a reason to do it. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. And that's really um, how we need to, to grow a pair as women, grow a pair of wings, so that we can not only fly, but soar and um, just adapt, adapt quickly to be more relevant, uh, competitive, sustainable, and just embrace the positive tool that virtual meetings offer us and to try and use soft skills to persuade and convince the owners. I think that's who we need to convince the owners and, and the trustees that this is the way to go for the foreseeable future. Um, there's so many pros and not very many cons 
and just to educate and train them because I think the fear of the unknown is what is the great that's actually the greatest obstacle that we're dealing with from an owner's perspective so I think owners uh, just like all of us don't like to be forced into a situation so if we can convince them um, you know, even offer them before the AGM to say to them, look, let's, um, let's do some, some test meetings and see how that works. Um, and once they realize how easy it is and how they can participate from the comfort of their own home, it will make such a huge difference to the way they embrace meetings. So, um, one of the other tips that I use for online meetings. Here we go. The joys. <laughs> so these are the things we deal with often. So one of the tips I do use for online AGMs is that when we send a reminder, and normally about a week before the AGM, we send a reminder. And with that, I actually send draft skeleton minutes of the meeting that we are about to have. So with those draft skeleton minutes, we have all the agenda items that's obviously included in the agenda as per prescribed management rule 17. And then all the resolutions that we are going to be deciding on at the meeting. And I think that really avoids a lot of um, shuffling of papers, uh, people trying to find where the AFS is and, and whereabout is the 10 year plan that you're referring to and the budget and all of these things is now you've consolidated the information of the AFS into a small paragraph. And that is on these couple of pages that you're sending them and those are the draft skeleton minutes. And that cuts the meeting down incredibly. Um, so, you know, to have AGMs within 40 minutes is, is really incredible because it avoids um, obviously a lot of chit chat and, and cuts down on the meeting. So another thing we ask owners to do before is once we've sent out the notice of meeting to please go through it and advise us, email us any questions that you might have and try and answer most of those questions, if not all of them before the AGM, because most often the questions that come up during an AGM is not really an AGM agenda item. It's just the, the misunderstanding or non-understanding of what they're reading in terms of the 10 year plan or the budget, they don't understand what they're looking at or in the AFS, they might have a question that we can answer. So that's, that also cuts down a lot of the time as well, because you're dealing with all those queries beforehand, and now they've already seen the draft minutes that they're going to be deciding on. Um, another thing is to ask everybody to please mute themselves. So I see there's a couple that have joined the meeting now, if we can ask them as well to please mute themselves. So we ask everyone to mute themselves at the beginning of the AGM, and then to unmute themselves if they have an objection. So in other words, I'll say, can we all confirm that we approve the agenda? If you have an objection, please unmute yourself. And generally you don't have a lot of people unmuting themselves. So you give it a couple of seconds. Good, unanimous, everyone has agreed. Thank you very much. And you move on to the next item. That way you don't have a lot of background noise and it also cuts, time, it cuts down on the time of the meeting. Um, we also ask people to um, only unmute themselves if they have a question or if they have something to contribute um, so that, you know, the only things you're dealing on is actually the voting and, and any questions that might arise during the meeting and discussions. Um, another, another way to keep control of the meeting, and I think this goes for physical meetings as well, you will find that um, you always have Mrs. B um, talking about the owner's dog and it barks and, and, that's, and that gets one of the things they have to bring up at an AGM because that's why they're at the AGM. Not for any of, of the other items, but generally because of the neighbor's dog. So I think what's important is everyone needs to feel that they've been heard. So you can gently interrupt the person and say, thank you so much. Um, we will we'll definitely make note of that. Your complaint has been heard. 
that is not, it does not fall within the scope of the AGM agenda, but the trustees will deal with that at the first trustees meeting after, you know, after this AGM. And they heard, they know it's written down, they know it's going to be discussed, and that stops it there and there. And we move on to the next topic. So those kinds of things is just a few tips is, is what we use. Also, um, when it comes to circulating vote forms, I'm a bit old school that way. So we've been sending it out via email and asking people to please print it, tick off all the items they agree to in the yes, no column, um, sign it and send it back to us. Either they can scan it and email it or take a photo and send it via WhatsApp. But we note after the meeting, a lot of that is not coming back. So we might get four vote forms, but there were actually 15 people at the meeting. Um, so now we've decided, and we're going to be using that for the first time next week, is um, Google Forms. So I've had to embrace, you know, this change and mutate myself, just like the virus, and try and find a way to um, work on Google Forms, which I've done, and it we're going to try that and see how that works. So all the votes, you know, you can tailor make it for your scheme. Um, or you can use one of the virtual meeting systems that specialize in community scheme management meetings and voting. Um, so that's something um, I'm going to hand over just now in a few minutes to, um, to Annette. Um, going back to the soft skills, I think it's very important to highlight to the owners or the pros. So I made a list of a couple of them. Um, one is to obviously avoid the risk of spreading the virus. That's the whole reason for having online meetings. Um, the other is the time and cost savings in terms of venue hire and um, not having to travel to and from the meeting. Uh, you don't have to leave work early. You don't have to navigate traffic. You don't have to spend money on petrol or parking or the actual risk of traveling itself. Um, and especially for women driving alone at night. I know that is quite a scary thing for, for a lot of us. Um, there's no need to find carers for the elderly who might be living with you uh, or babysitters for small children while you go and attend the meeting. Um, and also, one of the biggest things I've noticed is that people in other provinces and that live overseas are now participating for the very first time. I had one that's been overseas for 20 years, and this is the first time he's joined a meeting. And to show that interest in, in his investment, he would love to do more often. So those kinds of people that are not close by are saying, please, can we do this going forward? Virus or no virus, this is the way to you know, to have meetings in the future. Um, and obviously the quorum is easier to obtain. People are more punctual, uh, there's less chit chat and the meeting duration is shorter. And the sound is better, you can record the meeting and you can control proceedings more effectively and mute and unmute people as the chairperson, that's what you can do. So please refer to prescribed management rule 18.3 that basically states what the chairperson needs to do at meetings. And I think we forget to look at prescribed management rule 18. It's, it's, very, it's very important to go back and read that as a chairperson. Um, and then also it allows insurance brokers and other service providers to zoom in and participate in the meeting, answer questions about insurance aspects. And that takes the pressure off managing agents and trustees quite a lot as well. So now I'm going to hand over to Annette Lang. She's also on our steering committee and uh, Annette will talk about some of the challenges and obviously um, have a few questions for the panel. Annette. Welcome everybody, thank you. Um, our weather is just as good as Durban, also sunny and shiny. Um, I can agree with Serena with a number of the points that she deals with and we follow the similar pattern with regards to calling a meeting or an AGM. But we have had challenges in the past, although it has been welcomed by a number of 
um, chair people, trustees, etc., to hold these Zoom meetings because they feel that it is safer themselves and so on. I would like to use some of the challenges that we've been experiencing, and that is the elderly people who are um, pushing back because they don't, they say they can't connect, they're not technic um, technically um, advanced and so on. So we've had to overcome that. And in some ways, what has happened is that these owners and or trustees will join together in a person's flat, possibly one of the trustees flat, sitting with the correct protocol and sharing their um, computer so that the older people can also join in. And I agree with Serena, it is much safer. We've had staff that have been accosted when they've been leaving our office so, and after a meeting. So it is preferable that we hold in the future and always have um, Zoom meetings, et cetera, because it is much better and safer. Annette, um, can I guess, yeah, yeah. just interrupt you there. Sorry. I just wanted to ask you, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to ask you, what about these really obstructive owners who actually don't want to have a meeting at all because there's obviously a topic or a subject that they're not wanting to vote on or they're wanting to postpone or delay. I mean, we know all of those, all of those types of people. What happens if one of those people happens to be elderly and says, look, I don't have access to a computer, I don't have access to Wi-Fi, I'm scared of COVID, I don't want to go to someone's apartment. Because in terms of, of um, Management Rule 1710, it stipulates that video conferencing is allowed insofar as and as, as long as everyone has access to the platform. So then what do you do? The majority of people today have um, cell phones, elderly as well, and they all have WhatsApp. And if they have WhatsApp, they are able to do a Zoom meeting. It uses very little data, and we've explained this to them, but we haven't, I must be honest, we have not had much uphill against um, the Zoom meetings, even from the elderly, because they've been in agreement so far to join others at various flats. Um, we haven't had total objection, but we have explained to them that if they have WhatsApp, they are able to um, join in on a meeting. Please note that I am the most technically challenged person there is. I uh, took a long time to get this right. So, um, yeah, I've had someone to help me. I think that I must introduce some of the panel before we start all the questioning. Um, we have Gary and Logan Engelbrecht from BCM Track. We have Dani van der Merwe from We Connect You. And we have Puni Leroux from Meeting Pal. So some of these questions, once I've given you some more of the challenges, if you can step in and answer what you have, are able to tell us uh, the way forward. Um. Okay, some of the um, challenges that we also had is the load shedding. Whilst you have load shedding in one province at a certain time or one suburb at a one time, you can't get everybody in. Can uh, one of the team, i.e. BCM, we connect you, etc., able to assist us with that? <laughs> Gary? Are you Hi. able to help us or me? Yes, too? I can. Hi, okay. So I, I think what's important uh, to look at is um, if we can just take one step back, um, is to, you know, the participants here, mostly I see our managing agents or portfolio managers, and hopefully there's also a couple of trustees here. Um, the, 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 um, the thing that we have to look at is what is going to be the future of meetings? 
So most certainly virtual meetings now plays a massive role. And um, it's probably one of the small blessings that COVID actually brought about. Um, because I think you guys have all experienced virtual meetings to some degree um, using Zoom or Skype or any of the other platforms. And um, that the challenges that you face is, for example, the elderly person that, uh, and I see somebody also made a comment on the, um, in the chat box, that not everyone has a smartphone. And if lockdown level goes from level three to level two and back to level one, then, uh, and I also note that some managing agents are reverting back to physical meetings. So one has to look at the history. So historically, we never had virtual meetings. We only had physical meetings. And I, I'm not in all my time as a managing agent ever entertained or allowed for um, a telephonic attendance. So we're now in a situation where basically we can't really have uh, physical meetings. And if we do, all of the COVID protocols that take place are quite onerous. You've got to sanitize the entire area. Um, if people are attending a physical meeting, they're handling a vote card and if you have gloves on and so forth. So th there's quite a lot of health protocols that need to be adhered to. So hence, a virtual meeting is obviously a, a far better aspect. But there are still people that um, that have the challenge of, of no access or they say they don't have data, but, uh, you know, I, I really can't um, get over that one because if they can't afford data, how do they afford their levies, etc. And as you've rightly said, Annette, um, these meetings do not use a lot of data. Um, our experience has been that um, these meetings use about 100 megs of data per hour. Um, so, so coming back to where I started is what is going to be the future? Is it going to be, are we going to revert back to um, physical meetings when we go back to lockdown level two and level one? Or are we going to just push virtual meetings or are we going to do a combination? And I think the answer lies in the near future is going to be that we're going to be doing combination meetings as managing agents, um, as software providers. Um, it's going to be a thing that um, you will have to cater for a dual meeting. So the way to, to manage that is to um, send out your invites, allow for participants to reply and RSVP. RSVP, I'm attending the virtual. RSVP, I'm attending the physical. If no one RSVPs to a physical, then you have your virtual meeting, um, but you've catered for both environments. But you are then also allowing that person who really feels challenged um, to attend a physical meeting, however it's set up. Again, it doesn't have to be at the managing agent's office. The managing agent doesn't even have to be present at that physical meeting. But those are some of the things that we need to think about um, moving forward. And I'll, I'll never forget what Marina said to me last year. Um, Marina, you said that um, the industry needs to drive the change and we mustn't be afraid to, to implement things um, even if um, we're not fully going in accordance with the black and white script of the act. Um, we, we need to be able to be creative um, and that's how progress gets made. So this whole virtual meetings thing happened last year. Um, it was progress. It was progress for our whole industry. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have had the joys of being able to sit at home, not travel in traffic. Um, it's a lot safer. Um, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more comfortable. Uh, you only have to wear the top off of your clothes. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's my response. But I don't know about the other guys. Thanks, Gary. Um, I agree with what you're saying where we offer both at this present moment with all the uh, protocols that you have to follow with a physical meeting we are ourselves reluctant to have these meetings physical meetings and I think going forward for the safety and various issues that uh, um, Serena mentioned I think going forward we must um, change the way we think and work as Barry, Gary says, that we push for more um, Zoom meetings and so on, and try and avoid, where possible, the physical meetings. 
it is not necessary to be physically present now with all these changes and the technical advances we have. And we, we found out that the data that you use is very minimal and it's approximately five rand or maybe maximum 10 rand for data for these um, virtual meetings. I'm also going to bring in one of the others, maybe um, Puni, can you perhaps assist there with an answer? Morning, everybody. Yes, thank you. Um, so I do um, support the, the notion of uh, mixed meetings going forward eventually, even after we have uh, stepped out of uh, the level one uh, lockdowns. I do believe because of the benefits as explained by Serena as well, that we will in future even um, have mixed, uh, well, I call them mixed meetings, where we will have meetings in person and virtual. Um, from experience, what we have found uh, on our side is that dry runs or pre-meetings uh, um, is very, very important for even whatever technology you use, if you're going to use a form, uh, whatever. The problem that we face is that uh, as a chairman, you get under a lot of pressure. If you get challenged in the first half an hour, people can't access this. They don't know how to do this. They don't know how to do that. By setting up a dry run meeting, you can step through that and you can spend an hour or two hours taking everybody through the technology stack and for them to be acquainted by raising their hand, meeting themselves, unmeeting themselves, uh, casting their votes, where do they find the votes and how do they sign their attendance register and things like that. So on that principle, I think um, I've run a, a number of old age homes as homeowners associations uh, and I've had 90% uh, attendance. Uh, so <laughs> that is rather shocking. Uh, I've never had any, uh, in, in my personal capacity, any uh, meeting uh, where, where I chaired that I had 90% uh, attendance. Um, but it was based on the principle of just prepping the, the meeting properly. Uh, I always joke and say we should not lose common sense. We should still apply common sense. Uh, in our approach, uh, the, the, the fact that uh, things are, are, are moving um, and changing rapidly with uh, the, the uh, pandemic, we, we still need to just uh, apply common sense. And um, one of the things, as I said, is that even though we move back into a, uh, um, an environment where we will have physical meetings, the same principle will apply and will make it easier for us to hand out voting cards electronically rather than to, in that meeting, uh, even hand out uh, and have a mad dash for, for voting cards and motions uh, and collecting cards and stickers on the shoulder to show how many proxies you carry and things like that. Uh, so in, in that's my, my input in, into uh, how to succumb or overcome the, the um, pressure of uh, virtual meetings. Thank you, Puni. Um, I must admit, and I agree with Puni insofar as that we also have larger attendances to these virtual meetings, because as, as was mentioned earlier, people from Johannesburg overseas can also join in. And I think that they enjoy the fact that they are able to participate in these meetings. The other thing that people seem to um, struggle with is, is, well, we struggle with is the load shedding and the intermittent um, um, connections. How can one handle that? Is, um, 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 what's his name, Donny anywhere around? Or yes, good morning, uh, Annette. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the key word for me uh, is inclusivity. All right, so we obviously would like to assist the managing agent obtain quorum and the, the virtual meeting medium now uh, is, is really just another medium and that, that owners can use to actually take part. I mean, in the past, we really only gave them the option of, you know, come to the meeting personally. If you can't, obviously proxy. But, but uh, yeah, uh, really for me, the, the virtual meeting medium is, is another medium to include more people. Um, and I, I want to use an analogy and, and maybe... You guys can comment on, on whether you think it's accurate, but I mean, it, it could be in the past, if you take load shedding or an internet connection drop, it could have been that, that your car broke down on your way to the location. Um, and and uh, what, we, what we merely, like I say, doing is we, we're adding more channels 
for people to take part. And yes, in the past, there was people that, uh, you know, for some, maybe at their home, some emergency happened and they couldn't get away. But if there was an online medium to actually take part, they would have taken part. So there's definitely wins and losses on both sides. But for me, uh, you know, we're definitely going to have more inclusive, uh, well, it, it is a more inclusive approach. Um, and for me, that is healthy. We're going to get better AGM attendances uh, generally going forward, um, even though we might see, lo see load shedding or internet issues, um, you know, delaying people or, uh, you know, preventing people from actually joining. So for me, again, it's an overall benefit um, because uh, yeah, some of the problems we can't solve, just, just uh, similar to the fact that we couldn't solve the, the car breaking down in the past, you know. Uh, so maybe that's just a, an, a comparative analogy that I want to use. Maybe you guys disagree with me, but I think it's relevant. Uh, thank you, um, Donnie. I agree with you that there have always been people, excuses, I couldn't get a babysitter, I had to have a, a work, I had to, and I'm running late. So now, as, you, as was pointed out, the meetings are more punctual. There is a greater attendance. We are able to get people that never attended before due to the fact that they always had to send a proxy because they were not able to join in the meeting. Now they are able to physically join a virtual meeting and give their opinion too, if needs be. Um, so generally, I think that the going forward, although we'll have mixed meetings um, and have virtual as well as face-to-face -face meetings, that will be a long time coming. Um, I don't think that we can foresee the COVID disappearing to level one for a very long time. I think we're going to be sitting with this for a very, very long time. So virtual meetings, I would say, is the way forward. Mm -hmm. uh, can yeah. anybody else Very nice. have a question? And you know what I like about it too? The bread is not um, hard. <laughs> Somebody's having a toasted sandwich, looks like. Um, yeah. You know what? I couldn't actually agree with you, you more. And not only in the managing agent space, but also in our space as attorneys, for example. I mean, tomorrow I'm having a Zoom meeting with a guy in London who's got a problem with water ingress in his unit in Seapoint. So it's just amazing. And the other day we were on a, a real estate investor webinar. Um, and that webinar, we spoke to over 500 people, you know, all of a sudden. I've just been to country clubs giving my usual standard talks. And, you know, if we get 60 people, it's like this hooray, you know. So this is a new world. And we were saying at that, at that webinar that certainly managing agents who are keeping up with this and getting streamlined and, and really, really uh, ensuring that their staff are 100% um, up to speed with all these different options that are available around. I mean, th those are the ones that are going to distinguish themselves. I mean, I, I think that's fair enough to say. And at this point, yeah, carry on, Annette. No, I was just going to say, how does one get the um, the trustee resolution signed and um, and dealing with interruptions? Um, easy way is just to mute the person. Um, but if you do get these interruptions, and maybe one of the um, um, speakers can give us an answer. Um, perhaps, Gary, can you give us an answer on the people that interrupt? How do you control that? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so we make use of Zoom as the medium to communicate, and then we have an electronic voting platform which is independent running from Zoom. So we don't make use of the polls in Zoom, um, simply because you know that with bodies corporate, you have to have um, your voting in by PQ or by value. Um, and um, I, I actually just made a note here of some things that all of us need to be or take cognizance of. One of the critical things is, is to make sure that the voting or the procedure of the meeting is compliant. Okay. Because if it's not compliant, um, and I know we've got challenging times, but if it's not compliant, you stand the risk of being challenged and you stand the risk of CSOS um, ruling against you. 
So it, it, is, it is critical that when you're doing your voting, no matter how you orientate your meeting, is to make sure that the voting is done properly. Okay, it is, it is probably the most critical aspect of having that meeting. Um, so attendance is quite easy. You can facilitate um, Zoom, for example, and, and you asked about people with disturbances. Um, when you set your meeting up, Zoom has got a hell of a lot of features. Um, I, I don't know about the others, but I know Zoom is sort of the front runner when it comes to these things. Um, and so you can create settings before, uh, before your meeting starts that there's a waiting room and then you can allow entry. Um, you can mute your participants upon entry, so it's an automatic setting. Um, you can also have a control setting, an override setting, which basically says that um, everybody who comes into the meeting, their microphones will be on mute automatically, their video cameras will be disabled automatically. Um, so all you would do is you would share your screen and just explain why that, that is like it is. Um, we find that disabling the video cameras also reduces the amount of data that um, members use on their, on, their, uh, on their side of things. Um, so there's a lot of settings that, and, and um, the overriding setting gives you complete control. So in other words, no one can unmute themselves in the meeting. Like this one, for example, everyone can unmute themselves and put their own videos on. But um, if you use that setting, then no one can unmute themselves. No one can put their own video on. No one can share screen. No one can actually do anything. You actually control that entire meeting. So, um, and if a member wants to participate, um, Zoom has the functionality to raise hand. I see Skype also has that now. Um, and I'm sure some of the other products also have the ability for people to want to participate. So if they want to participate, they can raise their hand in this meeting. It will uh, signal to you and you can acknowledge them. And um, you can say, I'm coming to you now. I'm just finishing what I'm saying so that at least you're not interrupted if, you, if you're doing a specific uh, item on the agenda. And then you can unmute that individual, let them have their say, mute them again. Um, it Take cognizance of what the Act says. The Act says that the members must be able to interact with one another. Now, you're not prohibiting that from happening. You're just controlling how it happens. Okay, so so you need you guys just need to take into account the legalities, um, and especially with regards to voting. It, it, it's ultra critical because in time, these Zoom meetings that we've had and resolutions that get taken may be challenged. And, and you've got to be 100% concise because you know what have, what's going to happen is the trustees eventually will blame the managing agent for not conducting a compliant meeting. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Um, I think that we must pass over to Serena or uh, Marina because I know that they would like to wrap up before <laughs> in their 40 minutes. Thank you, Annette. Uh, maybe um, uh, Dani and Puna, I'd like uh, just um, a few few words on where you see things going and how you guys see yourselves fitting in. Maybe we start with Dani. Thank you very much, uh, Marina. Yeah, I think uh, personally, um, I'm really excited about uh, the fact that meetings is going online. Uh, shortly, I mean, I was also a managing agent and it was one of the things that uh, we struggled to really streamline and 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 uh, make scalable, if I can use that word. Um, and and COVID obviously has brought this opportunity. And and where we're seeing it really going is that now for the first time, meetings can also now be tech enabled. We can start to streamline meetings. And um, I think we spoke a little about the, a little bit about the in meeting functionality that that can be streamlined. But we definitely see great benefit in the pre pre-meeting items as we call them. Um, there's, there's lots of activity and time spent there and that could be streamlined a lot. And then after meetings as well, uh, you know, there's actions on, on meetings, uh, on minutes that needs to be um, followed up and, and need to be managed on, on global levels. I mean, I, I think I saw Andrew on, uh, on the call as well. I mean, managing over a thousand communities and knowing that you're actioning all those items on minutes prior to the next meeting. It, it must be absolutely massive. So there's really pre, mid and post meeting benefits that, that can be obtained. And I guess the pressure is on the three panelists to are building products in this space to really bring that about for the managing agent. I think there's, there's a huge amount of time saving that, that could be uh, achieved. 
Um, and uh, that's exactly what we have to achieve for the managing agent. So yeah, that's just a little bit from my side. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dani. And yes, I noticed Andrew Schaefer from Trafalgar is on, online. And uh, I just want to say you're very brave coming into the midst of all these ladies, even though we've got one or two male panelists. Uh, Puna, your last words, please. So I just wanted to, to uh, confirm that if you, whatever platform you're using, um, and there are always going to be an argument to use Teams for, from any of your corporate uh, owners uh, because of security, perceived security risks uh, on Zoom um, and uh, this, uh, the likes, whatever platform you use, you need to ensure that you are compliant. Uh, and the, the, the risk that you face with using Teams and or Zoom, Skype or and running a normal poll uh, is that, uh, first of all, you can't control your value votes and you can't control proxies. Uh, so based on that, also, you can't do suspension of votes. So you would like to add people to the meeting to, to determine the quorum. But uh, when it gets to voting, you want to suspend them uh, if they've got a judgment. So let me just qualify that before I get uh, hammered on that one. So if you've got a judgment, you've got to control that. So there are, there are a couple of things that one needs to take into consideration when you do pick the, the, the platform, um, whichever one you use. Um, as I said, uh, it is important to, to be compliant and make sure that uh, directly after the, the, the vote has been casted, uh, that you announce the results. Um, to the meeting so that uh, you can move on with the meeting and then sit with a process of delaying the meeting for 10, 20 minutes uh, while you're calculating the yeses and no's. So it's got to be a direct uh, after vote uh, announcement of the results, uh, taking into consideration proxies, uh, suspensions, uh, and even uh, if, if you run homeowners associations, uh, in compliance with MOIs in terms of their proxy settings uh, in, and the limitations on that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And I think the one last question that I'm going to leave you all with, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to email me the answer at marina, uh, marina at bbmlaw.co.za, is quite a, a burning question in the sectional title industry. So where you've got this intermittent disconnection, you form a quorum, you get to your meeting, you form a quorum, all of a sudden people lose signal and they drop off uh, on, on your meeting and you need to transact the business. What happens? Are you able to transact? Don't answer me now. You can email me and there'll be a, a, there'll be a, um, a, a nice price for you in the form of, of my book or we'll find a nice price for you. But just um, what happens? Can you transact the business when your quorum's dropped off? Or do you need, if you, if you form the quorum at the very beginning of the meeting, is that enough to sustain the meeting going forward? So I think that's a, a legal question that, that uh, can be answered and we'll send you all the answer. I have all your email addresses, so I'm happy to send you the, the answer to that. So um, just to say, uh, uh, Gary Engelbrecht from BCM Track, Puna LaRue from Meeting Pal and Dani Van Merva from We Connect You. Thank you so much for coming to our meeting and sharing this information because that's really, really what it's all about. And again, to our sponsor, Zed Diefen, for, for being with us on this journey. We look forward to welcoming CIA next month from March as well, who become a sponsor. Um, and uh, I, I wish you all a, a really, really fabulous day going forward. And uh, most importantly, take care. We look, to, to look forward to seeing you all, even the men, at the next seventh Women in Sectional Title webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Have a good day.